All right, so we learned about the principles of hair design and now we're gonna be getting into actual hair services. So we are gonna be covering in this lecture chapter 15, which is scalp care, shampooing, and conditioning. This is gonna be one of the shortest chapters that's in this um, section, section three. So the reason why we talk about shampooing, scalp care, and conditioning is because a lot of us are actually not doing this the correct way. I know a lot of students, they think that, oh, why do I have to cover shampooing? I already know how to shampoo my hair. And my response back is, well, do you? Like, can you explain to me the movements or the you know procedures? And some things that I think we always forget is that it almost seems like we know how to shampoo. We don't know how to shampoo the scientific way. One of the um, services that you will do for your state board is called the scientific, um, what is it? They call the scientific shampoo or the scientific brushing, which also stems from one of Redkin's old school sayings, treat your hair scientifically. So that's where that came out of. So you also wanna know shampooing because there's different types of shampoos out there. This chapter is gonna incorporate a lot of the chemistry that we talked about and what we've learned about uh, how chemicals work, the basics. We also want to know, ooh, I had a sneeze, sorry about that. So we have to know chemistry, but we also wanna know people skills because the shampoo is gonna be a big part of how you're gonna sell your services. The book gives you the example of walking in the salon, taking the time just to, you know, experience what you're seeing so close your eyes think about what the salon looks like what you hear what you smell all that the shampoo is going to be the first hands-on service that you're going to get done so after the consultation you're going to get your hair, sh hair shampooed a lot of clients is going to gauge a shampoo um and that's going to they're going to gauge a shampoo and that's going to form their framework of how good the service was the shampoo can simply make um it can make or break a service it can make a great service an excellent service it can make a boring service a good one the shampoo is where they're gonna relax, it's where they got their hair manipulated, their scalp manipulated. So you wanna um, use the shampoo as an opportunity to relax the client. They s claim that a shampoo can be as wet, as feel as good as a full body massage because of the pressure points and how you manipulate the scalp. They also say that if the clients are happy with the shampoo experience, they are far more likely to be happy with the entire service and I can confirm that is true. You'll have clients that are very picky. They'll tell you how they want their hair shampooed. Some clients will tell you, I want cold water, I want hot water, as hot as you can get it, so on and so forth. The book also gives you a side note on an FYI box about how you don't wanna talk during the shampoo service because that's gonna take away from the relaxing experience of it. A lot of us as hairdressers are talkers and you know if you had a teacher like mine, they might say less talking, more working. That's kind of your cue that when you're with a client, you don't want to be talking while they're getting hair shampooed unless they're talking back to you. It's like the whole don't speak until spoken to thing. Um, you also want to let them know during the shampoo, like how is this feel? Do you want harder manipulations? Sometimes the client will tell you, oh no, that's too cold. You also want to take the water and test it on your wrist or the back of your hand because that will tell you how hot it is. Typically in the back of your hand, if the water is too cold or too hot, it'll be way too cold or too hot for the client. So always try to do like a lukewarm water and ask the client, how is the water temperature? And they'll say, oh, it's too, you know, can you make it a little hotter? Um, they might tell you when you're rubbing it, like rub harder. You also want to know that the shampoo and the scalp manipulations, especially with scalp treatments, there may be some contraindications. So contraindicated, that's gonna be on your test. That means avoiding a procedure or condition that may produce undesirable side effects for a scalp. And in this case, this is a scalp massage. So for a scalp massage, certain types of illnesses like high blood pressure, which is also called hypertension, diabetes, heart issues, things like that, you have to be careful at massage because if a client has like, let's say a bleeding issue and you overstimulate the scalp, it may cause bleeding under the skin or bruising. Um, if they have I, I, other you know, disorders that can cause potentially death in a very serious you know, situation. Um, typically during a shampoo, you're not gonna get too much of that. I did have one client that was missing part of her skull because she had like brain cancer and you had to be careful when you're manipulating it because she had a soft spot so you don't wanna like press it. Usually the client will tell you that. So the book starts off with scalp care and massage. So the two basic requirements for a healthy scalp are cleanliness and stimulation. That will be on your test for the chapter. With the massage that you're given for a body massage, you'll do similar movements for a scalp massage. So the book will tell you that similar manipulations are given with all scalp treatments. Scalp massage is also used in shampoo. There's some overlap. Um, scalp Treatments should be given with a continuous even motion that will stimulate the scalp and help to relax the client. 
Do not massage or manipulate a client's scalp if abrasions are present because if there's blood that can put you at risk for a bloodborne illness or even worse, if a client has scabs on their scalp, which is pretty gross, and you're overly stimulating, you break those scabs, that can cause a lot of pain. Or if the client doesn't notice that, when you go to like perform a chemical service, if you're coloring the hair when damp, hair color is very alkaline pH, you're gonna put that in an open wound, it's gonna sting and put them at risk of an allergic reaction. So it says scalp treatments and massage may be performed either one, before shampoo if scalp condition is apparent or during the shampoo, once conditioner has been applied to the hair for relaxation. I'm gonna argue this and say that when you're doing a scalp treatment like a deep conditioner, the typical procedure is shampoo the hair, treat the hair after you towel blot, and then can rinse the you know deep treatment out, put a conditioner over it to seal the cuticle that seals the treatment in. Um, they give you all kinds of procedures and the difference between a relaxation and a treatment massage are the products you use. In a treatment massage, you're using a product that's gonna treat some kind of condition. So there's special scalp treatments for dandruff, there's scalp treatments for hair loss that have special ingredients in it. You wanna follow the manufacturer's directions um, with the product you're using. Some treatments require the hair to be dry, others require it to be wet. Some may require you shampoo the hair and then dry it. This all depends on the treatment you're performing and what products you're using. So, you want to make sure, it's, this is another good point when you're studying um, hair services, you want to know the muscles and location of the blood vessels and nerve points because you're able to stimulate the scalp appropriately. That can make the client um, that much more happier. And I've even known people when you start working in the salon, some states require, not some states require, but some states you can't booth rent, so you have to be an assistant for a while. When you're an assistant, typically they have you as a shampooer, which is probably the most stressful thing to do in the salon for a few years. That's gonna be how you're gonna um, you know, make a lot of tips. Typically, I knew one person that when they would go in the salon, they'd wanna go to her specifically because she was able to hit all the nerves, all the muscles, and she really gave them a good experience. So normal hair and scalp treatments. The purpose of a general um, scalp treatment is to maintain the scalp and hair in a clean, healthy condition. Um, you want to recommend specific scalp treatments after examinations because certain scalp treatments may be used for moisture, others may be used to get rid of um, excess oil. You don't want to give someone with a dry scalp something that's going to further strip their hair and make the condition worse. Uh, so you want to do the hair scalp analysis and recommend a treatment accordingly. If the client does request a treatment at that time, it should be given either before or after the shampoo, depending on what treatment's given. So for example, um, you read the manufacturer's directions again. Typically clients have an idea also of what they want. So if a client comes in and they say, do you have something that can get rid of my oil on my scalp? My scalp is itchy. That's gonna be where you wanna go. Or they'll say, oh, I have dandruff. I want something to get rid of that. Do you have anything you can give me or a treatment? That will guide your service. So the normal um, hair and scalp treatment is pretty general. They give you um, the procedure in the back. Dry hair and scalp treatment. This should be used when there is a deficiency of natural oil on the scalp and hair. Uh, you wanna select the proper ingredients. Typically for dry hair and scalp, you wanna be using moisturizing and emollient ingredients. Emollient is something that's gonna help condition the hair. It's usually an oil-based of some sort, but there's all kinds of products out there, all kinds of ingredients. You wanna avoid the use of strong soaps um, containing mineral or sulfonated oil-based greasy preparations or lotions with high alcohol, co alcohol content because this will make the uh, hair a lot worse. If you have dry hair and use a lot of um, alcohol, what that will do is that's gonna irritate the scalp and actually cause the body to produce more oil, as weird as that sounds. Likewise, um, using things with a lot of um, mineral oil, that can also clog pores and that can cause some additional issues. During a dry hair and scalp treatment, a Scalp steamer, which resembles a hooded dryer is used. Scalp steamers were really big back in the day. They are making a comeback and you typically use them, um, not just for dandruff treatments, but you'll do them for special scalp psoriasis treatments. You use them for accelerating hair color and chemicals. It's uh, a really cool product to use. So it's, it's like the whole idea of something that was there in the past making a comeback. So I think it's pretty cool how they're modernizing this. Oily hair and scalp treatments. Um, excessive oiliness is called by overactive sebaceous glands. You're gonna manipulate the hair similar to that of popping a pimple, which sounds kind of gross, um, but that's how it works. You're gonna like go in, push the hair in like that, and that's gonna squeeze the oil that's hiding those sebaceous glands out of the hair. Um, what this will do is this is gonna help get rid of the excess oil that's hiding in there, but it's also gonna help 
the um, glands normalize themselves, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of like weird. The last treatment that they commonly have is the anti-dandruff treatment. As we learned, dandruff is the overgrowth of the fungus called malassezia. What you would do for a dandruff um, treatment is use a specialty anti-dandruff shampoo, conditioner, and a topical treatment. This is gonna contain anti-dandruff ingredients, um, such as zinc and all that stuff. Um, what they'll do is the moisture, if you use this with a moisturizing ingredient, the moisturizer is gonna help to unlodge some of those dandruff flakes and help them peel off. Because of the ability of fungus to resist treatments, additional salon treatments, and the frequent use of anti-dandruff home care should be recommended. This is gonna be a selling point for the client. You're, able to, you're gonna be able to retail your specialty salon products because every you know, specialty salon product has some kind of anti-dandruff treatment. Anti-dandruff treatments will use a specialty service, um, so you'll have something to cure the dandruff, but something to also moisturize the scalp that might be dry and irritated. I know that one of the professional treatments out there is a called snowblower treatment. It's really cool. It's really good if someone has um, thick dandruff, you'll put it on there and you'll use a comb to kind of scrape this tip of the dandruff off on the scalp. It's actually very satisfying to watch if you don't have a weak stomach. So just to review, um, you're gonna have normal hair and scalp treatments, dry hair and scalp treatments, oily hair and scalp treatments, and anti-dandruff treatments. The treatment, the main difference between all of those is products used. Something for normal hair and scalp treatment is going to be something just to you know maintain the health of the hair. You're keeping the hair in that healthy condition. For oily hair and scalp, you're going to do a more intense massage, use a product to help eat up some of that oil. Some things that you might do for an oily hair and scalp treatment may be to pre-brush the hair, stimulate that scalp, get some of that oil off there, and then when you shampoo it, you're going to shampoo it away. Scalp steamers can also help with oily hair and scalp because you're going to cause that um, the sebaceous gland is to get that oil out, so that will help to um, help the scalp breathe. Next, we are gonna cover hair brushing. So brushing is very important if you're not using any kind of um, service that might contraindicate that. So hair brushing can stimulate the scalp. It brings blood up to the surface. It nourishes the hair follicles. It can help get excess product out because when you're brushing, you're gonna comb everything through the hair. So when you shampoo, there's a higher chance of getting everything off your hair that you wanna get off. So with the um, hair brushing, this also will help you to um, analyze the scalp properly, see if there's any abrasions. If you're brushing and the client says, oh, ow, something hurts, you're able to then peel back the hair and see, oh, they have like a bump, we can't go through with Tay's service we'll ha until it heals. Things like that are very important. There's two exceptions to brushing. You don't wanna brush or irritate the scalp before you give a chemical service. So for example, if you brush the hair before a chemical relaxer, Relaxer is a very strong product and you have some micro abrasions on there, you're gonna put that very caustic chemical in the scalp and they're gonna scream. You also don't wanna brush if the scalp is irritated. If they have scalp psoriasis or some kind of issue, that's gonna be a huge um, problem because that can make the service um, be, feel very uncomfortable. Brushing, massaging, or shampooing the scalp before a service is not recommended for single process and double process hair color. Highlighting most chemical relaxers, you wanna follow the directions. Some temporary and semi-permanent colors, depends on the directions again. Um, if shampooing is recommended, shampoo gently to avoid scalp irritation. Um, one of the most highly recommended hair brushes are those made from natural br uh, bristles. Natural bristles have many tiny overlapping layers or scales which clean and add luster to the hair. Hair brushes with nylon bristles are shiny and smooth and are more suitable for hair styling. So what that means is that nylon bristles are used for blowouts. One of the best um, natural sources for natural bristles is the boar brush. This can become a problem if your client is vegan, so you wanna make sure if your salon is touted as a natural salon, you have an alternative to that, something you can use in place of that. So the boar bristles, um, they add shine to the hair, so it's great to pre-prep the hair if you're when you're brushing it through, absorbing the oil. One of the issues with boar, br um, boar brushes is that the brushes might be wooden and technically, even though we use them in the salon when we're not supposed to, state, state board does not recommend them because you can't clean wood. Wood's um, porous and it can suck up water so you can't thoroughly sanitize them. I also wanna challenge the point about um, brushing the hair before a chemical service like color. So one of the things that I've learned, and this is something that um, you'll learn with continuing education, you can apply color when wet, so you actually can shampoo the hair when it's damp. If you've seen that in Studio Luma, they do that in the episode with the um, the two episodes. One of them is a great coverage, the other one was the demi-color one. Some hair colors actually recommend that you color the hair on clean, damp hair. 
So you always want to read the instructions. Also, um, I recommend doing a mineral removing treatment like Malibu C before any kind of chemical service because you're getting the hair clean. Now, in the case of a hair relaxer, that would be something that you'd have the client do at home, have them or do it in the salon, have the client come back in a few days. That helps you build money as a professional, but it also helps the client keep coming back to you because they know that, oh, this person's for real. I've never had a perm this good or a relaxer this good. Little things like that are important. And we're gonna talk about hard water in the next section of this. So I just wanna give you guys a taste of that. The other important point is to understand the products you're using. So you wanna understand the shampoo. The shampoo um, will give you a chance to analyze the client's hair and scalp. You're gonna feel for certain things. If the client has a heavy buildup of scatula or um, pitarized steatodes, you will feel it being very thick. It almost feels like they have a helmet on their hair and it might have a musty odor. You wanna check for conditions such as dry dehydrated hair, thinning of the hair, excessive hair left in the sink after shampooing, because that might mean they have some kind of issue going on. A dry tight scalp, an oily scalp, abnormal flaking of the scalp, open wounds or scalp irritations, scalp disorders and diseases. And this is the grossest thing they've written in here, tick or lice infestation. Typically you'll see head lice before you go to the shampoo bowl, but also um, I don't know many clients that would have a tick infestation unless you're sleeping in a barn, um, but I guess I have to put it to put it. They also recommend using good posture, and I can definitely attest to this. If you do not shampoo right, one of the best shampoos is the stand behind shampoo. So if I'm standing here, the shampoo's in front of me, I have full range of the client so I can massage their head. The other shampoo bowls around like this, that can wear my back out and that will wear your body out. So you always wanna make sure you're doing good posture. Um, Freestanding shampoo bowls allow for a healthier body alignment and they always recommend that for salons. It's not always possible. Like my school, you had shampoos that were to the side so it became very tough to fully rinse and shampoo the hair. Um, if salons use assistance, the book recommends um, if you're an assistant um, telling the head stylist something might be up and just giving them a heads up on something. If there's an infectious disease, you don't want to treat it in the salon, you just want to refer them to a physician as always. Um, the primary purpose of a shampoo is to cleanse the hair prior to a service. This is also a time when you need to educate your client about the importance of home care using high quality products. If the client says, oh, I like the smell of that, what did you use? Um, you can explain that to them, why you're using what you're using, and then do a soft sell, so recommend that later on. To, and the book also not mentions another key point that may be on your test, and it's to be effective. A shampoo must remove all dirt, oils, cosmetics, and skin debris without adversely affecting either the hair or scalp. The scalp and hair need to be cleansed regularly to combat the accumulation of oil and perspiration that mix with natural scales and dirt to create a breeding gown for scalp di disease producing bacteria. So if you never wash your hair, what would happen is your hair would mat up. It would almost be like, um, almost be like dreadlocks, but not quite like that. Because there's a method doing dreadlocks, dreadlocks can actually be, be very clean if you do them correctly. So your scalp would all mat up. You'd get a lot of hair loss because there'd be a layer of dirt and grime and you might get a scalp infection. That was the issue with the whole trend of the rapid weaves where people were doing the stocking cap weaves. So the key point in that is to know that shampoo, if you do not use shampoo correctly, shampoo can damage your hair. I've had people say, well, I don't wanna you know, color my hair because it will damage my hair. Or they'll ask, is demi-permanent damaging? And I'll say, yes, but anything is damaging. Shampoo is damaging. Too high of a heat tool is damaging. pH determines that. So if you use a very harsh, harsh abrasive shampoo, that can actually make your scalp condition worse and it can destroy your hair at the same time. So two um, whammies for the price of one. You also get the um, biggest question that a lot of clients ask, and this is where it gets into like a myth. How often do you have to wash your hair? And I don't have an answer for that. My own answer is as often as you need it. This is something that's very personal. For myself, I get about three to four days without washing my hair. Someone else that may be um, too infrequent, they might have too much of an oily scalp or they'll have to wash it every other day. I will tell you as a professional that washing your hair multiple times in one day is not a good thing. That will dry your hair out, that will irritate your scalp, that will ruin your best color, that will ruin a perm if you have one. Typically, every other day is fine for most people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna come back, and when we start up again, I'm gonna talk about what happens when you overwash your hair, and then we're gonna segue into um, selecting the proper shampoo, how shampoo works, and the chemistry of water.